going to be rendering this wee small brick wall here on a bit of a patio and like I always say preparation's key guys so going to give it a, a quick blast with the power hose here and get it really really well cleaned up get any moss any dust from the other wee bits I was doing there washed off and everything I'm going to cover here I'm going to cover my SBR the mix of the sand cement render for the scratch coating and I'll cover coating and beading tools are used and basically every, every little detail on this first coat on this red brick just like to give the mate a thanks for the land of the power hose for the preparation but here we are now guys I have my mix spinning while I do a wee bit more preparation and here we are with 50-50 ASBR and it is quite a warm day so the power hosing of the bricks you can see the ground everything's kind of dried up pretty quickly um, obviously I've got my mix on between hand too but just smothering it here in ASBR you can see putting plenty on not afraid to use it um, this was quite some time ago SBR wasn't quite as dear but at the same time guys I'm gonna put some SBR in the mix to also make it uh, you know better at sticking and create a wee bit more like adhesive and you just know it's gonna bond well when you do that and if it does dry this isn't a big area especially for me I can scratch coat quickly so but if, if you are a DIYer, you're having a go yourself, an apprentice, you might want to just, you know, coat half of that with the SBR, then coat over it, and then paint the rest and coat over it then. Like I always say, you, you want to get over the stuff before it goes fully dry. Just uh, a quick one on the trowel, refine a pool trowel here, and it's a, a stiff pool trowel. Uh, so it's it's not the flexible one. I do have a flexible one, which is brilliant um, But you can see not much flex in this so when I'm trying on here It will hold its shape. It won't you know won't go over the, any bumps or bad bricks and stuff and Hopefully leave less lines And I'm sure you have never seen the plaster plastering over the camera before but it has to be done but yeah this pull shell hopefully will use you know less lines give it a wee test out see what it's like um, but this back to the SBR another thing I want to cover with you just while I'm covering the wall on the camera here is that I uh, yes I could have scud coated this wall I do know how to scud coat um, I do know all my options and quite a lot of methods and there is a reason why I'm doing it this way. Scud coat may be that little bit superior, although this is to me this is going to be really strong. Even the next day, you'll feel the strength of this render to this brick. But basically, if I scud coated this, I'd have to put sheets over that oil tank, over the ground, and probably board up that that door there to stop the stuff getting over there. If it splatted over onto the pebble dash, it would be hard to wash if I missed anything, especially because I put SBR in my scud coat. It would be an absolute disaster to clean if you miss anything. It's really I'm not joking. The next day, even on glass, if you miss a wee splatter or two with scud coat with SBR, it's really hard to clean, if not nearly impossible. So obviously the reason I've went for this is it's only a small job and again the cleanup isn't worth the hassle of the scud coating it's different if you're on a job and they've hacked it all off and the, all the gardens are getting redone the windows are taped up and you just have to really clean maybe wash down your face your board and give the, the ground a bit of a scrape a yes, scud coat would definitely be recommended then but if, if you are doing something small like so, it's maybe not worth that big hassle of cleanup. But if you do want a scud coat, 
or do a slurry paint on it. Scud coat and slurry coat is on the channel. All my ratios to that. The ratio to this is three to one, and you know, it's it's already on. It's not a big big job. So uh, along the top here, we will be fitting a bead, a floating bead, and that's just make life a bit handier. I do prefer rules, but the fact that there's an oil tank there. I'm not going to be able to get a rule down behind that, so I just figured if I beat it round, it'll be much easier. I can plumb them all up and then, you know, just float it the next day. It's going to be a lot handier. But yeah, so just free hunt in the top, as you can see. And I'll use the bead. When you are doing, if you are doing free hand corners, just make sure you really compact and fill out the corner you can see I'm taking a bit of time on that area as you don't want any sort of hollow bits but again when you come to sticker bead you kind of dress that further and get it really really tidy um, still using the hawk the pointsman hawk this this video believe it or not was recorded years and years ago as some of you make some of the older subscribers might notice the window in the background that I've scratched around that and that video is actually on the channel it's me doing bands around that window and making it look a bit nicer put a wee slope on the top and stuff um, so maybe worth having a wee peek at that too I'll try and get that video in the description or something so if you are interested also the Scott Coat one and he will to talk about I'll try and squeeze it into the description or the comments but yeah just paint in the back here I'm gonna give that a wee scratch as well and float it right round the face so we've coated it all guys it's time for the beads so you can use a measuring tape to measure up your beads most times I like to offer them up and sort of cut them in you know situ and um, as you see just use my thumb that the hold where it is um, if you are doing that and you're not too sure you might want to cut it a few mil bigger and then when you set it in adjust it with another wee a wee snip up um, but yeah you just do know most times I prefer rules but just some some jobs a bead is the way to go I think I have a rendering video where there's a fence up tight to the wall and you you know you're just not gonna get any any rules in there because you've no room to swing a hammer and nail it so sticking a bead on it's quite a clever option again there's other things you can do you can scratch all this and then glue your bead on next time but I like the idea of scratching this on having it stuck with my SBR and then it's you know it's really bonded in there it's I know it's bedded in well again PVC beads as well that's all the same I find both this bead and a PVC bead have different weaknesses I think these beads grip better um, but they also have the potential to rust down the line um, whereas PVC beads will never rust but they also tend to want to pop along the I think they're not open enough I think that's their problem I think whoever designs beads if you're listening if you can make the holes more grippy a bit more actually see yourself PVC make make more gaps up them if possible um, and you'll have a, a better bond the problem is plaster over plastic isn't ideal so and it's, like take the mesh on these together Plastering over metal is not ideal, but look at the gaps. So you're getting real good good grip there So there if anybody is listening that makes beads That's definitely the way to go But yeah, so just set them on and the idea is you don't want to press too hard You want to kind of do that when you're setting them if, if possible around the door a window it's a wee bit different you do have to make sure this sort of stick on so what I'm doing here guys is I'm what's called margining them 
and that's just making sure that they're say six inches the whole way down and that means it won't be in and out when you look up it and it's quite important guys so now I have that I'm happy enough to put a wee bed just to hold it and you can see it's still a bit looser at the corner a bit heavier but once you have it set that way then I'm gonna plumb it up this, this is the harder side of plastering making sure things are level double checking them and then cleaning down your beads and stuff as well just just the, it'll all make the next process easier and with beads on it's gonna be much easier as long as they're all set good last thing you want guys come the next day and you notice oh that beads moved or I didn't didn't put that just quite straight it's much harder to fix the next day so do spend that little bit of time on a bead before you walk away just make sure it's right so again a bit of clean up to do on the floor but a lot less than if I had a scud coated it would have been oh, a slower start and a, a much slower clean up so now I'm just checking it for plumb guys both sides and by the looks of that I kind of got lucky but basically if you need to go down you just press it down and then you trowel in along your bead and definitely got lucky with that one or I coated it pretty nice sliced the brick layer actually did a good job for a change but anyway um, yeah so make sure it's well beaded in bedded in and you'll be good for your next coat the next day all I have to left to do here is just scratch it up and again I prefer not doing wiggly squiggly lines some guys do but that's okay and um, I will cover that in another video my thoughts on squiggly and straight uh, you already know my thoughts on the type of scratcher scarifier that I use basically I like the the flat one I find they're close enough and they leave it deep enough still and um, subscriber was saying that he likes to let his render pick up before he scratches it but I find with that one because it's a wee bit more flexible you can't let it pick up too far or it won't actually leave a key and the important part guys of this is leaving a good key if you don't leave a good key you're gonna find it hard to straighten the wall because the stuff can slide and slump off and just the, the, the lifetime of the job won't be as superior a good key like that where it's marked in pretty well will help your next coat bond and last a lot longer but like I say I do have an upcoming video where I'll, I'll, I'll talk about squiggly scratch coat and straight scratch coat but hopefully this is giving you a good insight to scratch coating first coating working over old red brick and any brick and SBR and ratios of sand cement render <laughs>